In this video, we're going to learn about the Boolean data type. That will prepare us for looking into more detail into conditions and the if statement in the next video. So let's open a new file and let's call it booleans. And let me give you an example. So we have seen previously that whenever we compare a left-hand side to the right-hand side, we get back either a true or false answer. So let's uh, look at an example. Let's compare the number 42 maybe to the number 43 and we get back false. And let's uh, have a second example. Let's compare the number 42 to the floating point number 42.0. And now we get back true. So true and false are Python's way of saying yes or no. And um, they are spe special built-ins. So in other words, if I go ahead and I type true or I type false, Python immediately knows what we mean. So it's built in. Uh, note that the T and the F are uppercase, so lowercase will not work. And both objects are of the same data type. So the type of true is bool, for short for boolean. And the type of false is also bool, also for boolean. And these are the only two objects of this data type, okay? So um, yeah, so there is not a, a third or fourth data uh, object um, of this given data type. Um, one short note, we should not um, confuse uh, false in particular with another object, which is called none. So none is a special object that um, we did not talk about explicitly in, in the previous videos, but um, we um, encounter none already when we work with functions. So um, whenever we um, write a function, but we don't specify a return statement inside the function's body, so the function has not an explicit return value, then implicitly the none uh, object is always uh, going to be returned. So let's see that what is the data type of none. The data type of none is simply the none type. So here we see that none and false are two different uh, objects of different data types. However, one thing that um, I already say that uh, true and false sometimes behave similarly. So therefore they are often confused, but um, let's simply write here, false is not none. And you know what I want to say here, just don't confuse the two, okay? They, they are different, different objects. So um, let's um, use a bit more grammar. So um, the, the first two code cells that we see here, are examples um, of what we call Boolean expressions. So any um, piece of code, any expression that evaluates into either true or false um, is what we call a Boolean expression. And uh, I will give you a couple of more examples. So, uh, but uh, we will introduce another concept. And the another uh, concept is that of the so-called relational operators. So relational operators are simply operators that take a left-hand side and a right-hand side and compare the two sides with each other. So to say the left-hand side is related somehow to the right-hand side. We've seen the double equal sign up here. So the double equal sign, let's um, briefly copy paste it down here as well for completeness sake. The double equal sign um, is the um, comparison operator. And if we want to check for the opposite, um, what we could do is we could compare the number 42 uh, if the number 42 is not equal to the number 43, we do that with exclamation mark equals. So that's simply the opposite. So that's why we get back true here. And uh, note that in a couple of other programming languages, you may see um, the uh, smaller than greater than uh, symbol like this to indicate not equals to, but in Python, um, this is simply exclamation mark equals. Okay. So um, there are in total four more relation operators and they adhere to uh, what we know from mathematics. So if we want to ask the question, is the number 42 smaller than the number 43? It's of course true. And similarly, we could go ahead and compare if the left-hand side 42 is smaller than or equal to 43. This would also work. And then two more examples. Um, let's go ahead and compare 42 and ask the question, is it greater than, strictly greater than 43? And the answer would be of course false. And then um, let's do one more example here. And the example will be, is 43 greater than or equal to 42? And now we have seen all six uh, relational operators. So um, whenever we use a relational operator, 
the result um, is of course always a boolean expression so it's going to return us a boolean so a true or false one of the two objects so um yeah so that is relational operators and uh, now let's ask the question how can we compare different um different um or how can we connect that's a better, better term how can we connect um, different um, boolean expressions together and we do so with another breed of operators these are the so-called logical operators so let's maybe summarize them um, connect different um, boolean expressions together to form a bigger one then of course so um, let's do an example let's go ahead and um, set a to 42 and let's set b to 87 and now we could ask the question for example is a uh, smaller than 5 and at the same time is b let's say smaller than um, or equal to 100 and let's execute that and the answer is false and the reason for that is because the left hand side here is of course false okay so in other words we can say and um, becomes or evaluates into true only if both sides are true okay and because the left hand side the boolean expression on the left hand side evaluates into false um, that means uh, it doesn't even matter what the right hand side is so the right hand side is of course true but it's not enough so the overall expression um, is uh, false here let's uh, do a different uh, example so let's simply copy paste this and let's uh, turn around the left hand um, comparison operator here and now we get it true okay so if both sides are true then the overall result will be true sometimes um, people um, are confused about the order of precedence here so what that means is um, sometimes you will see people put a pair of parentheses around the left and the right hand um, um, boolean expressions so so as to indicate that um, you know the the relation operators are executed first and then the logical one after that but note that this is not uh, necessary um, the rule is that all the um, relational operators will always be executed first before um, all the logical ones so um, no need to do that okay let's introduce two more logical operators because there are only three actually so let's go ahead and take our first example and uh, now remember that the left hand side is false the, the right hand side is true and therefore the overall result was false however if we replace the AND operator with the OR operator, I get back a true. Okay, so the idea of the OR operator is becomes true if either side is true. And to avoid some confusion for some beginners, um, if either side is true or of course both sides are true okay so um, if i take the second example from above where both sides are true and i copy paste this down here and i replace the and with an or the answer is of course also true okay it is enough that one of the two sides is true and then the overall result um, will be will be true so sometimes um, what you want to do is you want to negate um, the um, truth value so to say of an object so you want to um, convert true into false and false into um, true we could also say um, we flip the truth value there's an operator for that and the operator for that is the so-called not operator so not and let's just simply say flips the true and false so let's see an example um, of that so um, if I ask the question, is a smaller than five? The answer is false. But if I go ahead and negate that with a not, the answer becomes true. And also here, sometimes what you see is um, people will put parentheses here 
because they are not sure if um, the relational operator will be executed first, but the answer is it is. So um, as I said, the rule is that all the relational operators are always executed before all the um, logical ones. However, for the logical operators, there is an order of precedence. So in other words, an order of execution and the order goes like this. All the nodes have the highest binding power. Um, then comes the ands, and lastly comes the ors. Okay, so let's maybe uh, go ahead and come up with another example. Let's say a is smaller than or equal to 100, or not, b is greater than 100. So the overall result is true, but let's now break it down why it is true. So if we want, if we see an expression like that, the way to read it is we know by now that all the um, relational operators go first. So we could think of implicit parentheses B here. And then the not has a higher binding power than anything else. So it goes like this. And then the or will basically connect the truth value of the left hand side with the truth value of this expression. So this is how um, Python would read it. Okay. And again, uh, the, the end is not in here. But um, yeah, so sometimes let's do another example. So let's say um, A is smaller than, let's say, um, 40. And B is greater than 100. Or B is smaller than or equal to 90. Let's see what the result is. It's true. But now how does Python do that? Well, Python will go ahead and the relational operators are all executed first. So let's put parentheses here. And now the next couple of uh, parentheses will go around the AND here. Okay, because the AND has the higher binding power than the OR. So we see that the result does not change. So that is um, the order of precedence for the logical operators. Um, and these three logical operators, they have an interesting theoretical uh, property. With them, you can express anything that can be expressed mathematically. So they are enough to express any uh, truth or false statement about the world, so to say, in code. And um, they um, yeah, are more than enough. Some programming languages have um, other um, operators, so additional um, logical operators, but Python only uh, has those three. And uh, any other logical operation that we want to implement, we would have to implement using those three here, but um, it can be proven that this is uh, doable. Okay, so these three are, are enough to uh, model any logical idea um, that we want to model. So let's see um, what else uh, is there to learn. So let's say um, one nice thing about Python is um, if I want to check, let's say if A is in the interval of, let's say 10 and 50, um, I can just do, do that by chaining the operators. So here that is an example of what we call operator chaining. And um, that would be, of course, the same as if, let's uh, go ahead and do the um, not chained way. Um, this would, of course, be the same as if we went ahead and we wrote the same, um, the same expression, but we write it like this. So 10 smaller than A and A smaller than 50. That is basically the, the long version and the chained version, the operator chaining version here is the short version of that. So whenever you see two operators chained together like this, then you can implicitly um, expand the A in the middle as A and A. Okay, so that is often what you see. This is something that a couple of programming languages support. Um, Python does, some others don't, uh, but this is in particular nice when you work with numbers. For example, when you want to express the idea that some number is in a range uh, of two other numbers or not. Okay, so that's uh, a nice thing to know. And uh, now let's go ahead and um, introduce another nice idea, the idea of truthy. So let's execute the cell so we see it's the same. So now comes the next idea, the idea of truthy versus falsy. So what this is, um, this may look a bit weird in the beginning, but we will see when we work with the if statement in the next video 
that uh, knowing this will prevent us from making uh, further um, logical mistakes. So let's say I go ahead and I say um, A, which is 42. If I go ahead and I say if A is smaller than, let's say 40, and at the same time B, let's say minus 100 or Let's say b minus yeah. Let's say b minus one hundred, and then let's simply not do anything here. And that is quite interesting. So why does this work? So why does this first of all not give us an error? Because if we watch closely in the example, on the left hand side I have a relational operator. On the right hand side I forgot, for example, the relational operator. I mean this could this could read like b minus one hundred is smaller than I don't know two thousand. And maybe I, I simply forgot the smaller than 2000. This often happens, but we don't get an error here. So on the right hand side, I have an arithmetic expression, not a Boolean expression. However, um, the AND operator doesn't really care. And the reason why is because the AND operator, what it really does is it looks at the left hand side and checks if this is a Boolean uh, value it gets back. So either true or false, and it does so to, uh, in the same way for the right hand side. However, if it does not get back a true or false. It does the following. It calls the bool constructor. So just note how we learned about constructors in the previous video and uh, when we talked about data types. And the bool data type, of course, also works as a constructor. So let's use the bool constructor. And let's pass to it a smaller than 40. And let's write and bool of b minus 100. So this is basically what Python does in the background whenever you write an expression like that using a logical operator. So the logical operator needs a Boolean on the left and the right hand side. But in this example, I don't give it a Boolean. So B is 87. So 87 minus 100 is minus 13. So the, the right hand side is negative 13. Um, it is not a Boolean. However, it does not complain. And the reason why is because Python, if it does not, if it is not given a Boolean here, then it just converts whatever it gets into a Boolean by using the bool constructor. And let's now break this down into two separate steps. So if I go ahead and simply copy paste the left hand side here, I get back a false. And if I copy paste the right hand side here, I get back a true. So you may wonder why is that a true? Okay, so if I go ahead and remove the bool, it's negative 13, as I said. But if I write back bool, then um, what we see here is that um, a negative number is uh, tr considered true. So the rule is um, any number other than zero is true. So let's confirm that. Let's go ahead and um, write bool of zero. And indeed we get back false. And if I write, let's say bool of one, I get back a true, but if I also write bool of negative one, any negative number works, I also get back a true. So um, in other words, you have to be um, careful that um, if you write, just because you write an expression like the logical operator and here that requires um, some Boolean values and uh, they don't uh, complain if you don't give uh, a Boolean value to them. They just convert whatever you give them into a Boolean uh, value uh, themselves. And um, sometimes you hear programmers say an object is truthy if it behaves like true in a Boolean context. So that is what we say. And then for, for falsy, it's the same definition. An object is considered falsy if it behaves like false in a Boolean context. And what do we mean by context? In this example here, we just I mean we use the logical operator and that requires Booleans on both sides. That is the Boolean context. Okay, so um, that is uh, truthy versus falsy. So we will see um, an example of that in an if statement in the next video where I will on purpose make a mistake and uh, then you will immediately know um, what the mistake is. And also note in the chapter, you will see a couple of other rules for how the bool constructor works. For example, um, if we go ahead and we give the bool constructor a list and the list contains the number zero, it is still considered true. So in other words, the rule is 
say rule any non-empty list is true. So in other words, if I remove the zero here, the bool um, uh, will be false. So an empty list will also be false. So this is also something that goes uh, into this uh, subsection here, true C versus false C. Okay, so and now let's also see I, in the beginning of this video, I told you that there is a special value called none and people often confuse it with false. So now let's see why. Now that we know the bool constructor, let's use the bool constructor and pass to it none and we will get back false. And that is the false friend here. Okay, so maybe let's write false friend so that you remember why. So none behaves like false. N important in a Boolean context. So um, that is why it's often confused. So note that none is not false, but it behaves like false, but only in a Boolean context. So that is where um, the idea of a false friend comes from here. Okay, so um, also let's do um, a last section in this video. And the section title will be short circuiting. And here I will show you um, a couple of details about how the logical operators work. So um, in other words, let's write the logical operators um, and execution once the result is determined. And we actually saw a, um, an example of that. So let's go back up here. Um, I think it was here the first example. So it was this example here. So um, note that this example here on the left hand side, a is smaller than five, a is 42. So the left hand side is already false. So the, the question is, the end operator becomes true only if both sides are true. However, if the left hand side is already false, it is not worthwhile to check the right hand side, right? So in other words, it does not make sense from a compu computational perspective to look at the right hand side at all, right? Because the, the result is already determined solely by the left hand side. And that is an example of short circuiting. So the execution from left to right stops once the overall result um, is there. So let's um, take this down here and copy paste it down so that we have one uh, example here. So the right hand side is not executed. And now let's also look at a couple of more details of how um, AND and OR work. So above I said the whole point of having logical operators is to connect different Boolean expressions together. However, um, in Python, the um, logical operators uh, work um, um, a lot more um, in, a, in a lot uh, more generic way. So let's go ahead and write five and nine, for example. And interestingly, I get back the number nine. So you may wonder um, how can how can it be that and uh, gives me back the number nine here? Okay. So in other words, um, and does not even uh, care about. Um, what I give it. And I, we saw that above in the discussion with truthy versus falsy, that if the left hand side is in this case a number, what Python does behind the scenes is it will put it inside the bool constructor and then um, it will get back um, in this case because the number five is not zero, it will get back true. And then Python will go ahead and will evaluate the right hand side and the right hand side, the boolean of nine is also true. And then it returns not the boolean of the right hand side, but it returns the right hand side itself. Okay, so that is the rule here. And similarly, if I go ahead and say, let's say zero and nine, I get back the number zero. Because zero in a boolean context the, the, is falsy, so it's it's just it behaves like false. Therefore, the end operator knows that it does not even have to look at the right hand side. Why? 
Well, because the left-hand side is already falsy, so um, it doesn't even make sense to look at the right-hand side. Therefore, the result is determined solely by the left-hand side, and um, the precise operation of the um, or working of the end operator is it does not give us back a true or false it just gives us back the argument itself so that is why i get back the zero here okay so um, this is also a source of confusion that and and also the other two operators not and um, and or they work with um, any uh, operand you give them any data type that not that somehow can be handled by the bool constructor in the background and uh, the reason why i put this in the video here is because I want to make you aware of that because oftentimes when you uh, want to write an if condition like this and you make a mistake you forget to um, put some relational operator somewhere or maybe one operand is not uh, a true or false at all then uh, you may get weird results and the weir weird results can often be explained uh, with the fact that um, the uh, logical operator does something that you don't expect it to do. And uh, so now in this video, I talked about all the details of the logical operators. So if you get a, a weird result, um, then uh, in your example, uh, you maybe should break down um, the entire line, the entire expression and see um, that, you know, and check if you maybe give it um, a non-Boolean expression that then behaves uh, in a Boolean context somehow. And then maybe you get back weird results, okay? So that's the idea of short circuiting. So um, yeah, so that is um, how how the booleans uh, work in Python roughly. And in the next video, we will see what we can do with booleans. Namely, we can use them to formulate if conditions and to um, implement some if else logic. And uh, that is uh, probably the number one application of booleans. Okay, so I see you in the next video.